The legislator for Nyali, Mohamed Ali, recently called a very interesting press conference. And he was armed <laughs> with documents. And many Kenyans were just wowed by that presser. You know, politicians in Kenya have been known to call press conferences and beat about the bush and talk in parables. Yeah, but that's not what Muhammad Ali did. He named names. And even when he just stopped short of naming some people, yeah, because he said he's not protected by parliamentary privilege, yeah, it was very easy to conclude exactly who he was referring to. Basically, the Nyali legislator was detailing how some heavyweights, big fish, biggest of the big fish, had taken over the Mombasa port for personal gain and profit at the expense of the long-suffering Mombasa people. Now, there's no doubt that Jichopevu, as is popularly known, yeah, from his past as a journalist, where he did some of the most amazing exposés in the history of journalism in Kenya, clearly, Jichopevu is on the warpath. But what is really going on here? Yeah, because also, in the recent past, this same legislator has disappointed yeah, many of his huge fans who were very excited about him being in parliament, including yours truly. And instead, it emerged that Honorable Ali was a very close ally of Deputy President William Samoy Ruto. Kenyans were shocked. But then it appears at this 11th hour, <laughs> Jichopevu has finally found himself. Or has he? I think what we need to do is to back up a little. Yeah. Go back and start this story right at the beginning. Yeah. Then we'll be in a much better position to understand exactly what is going down here. Yeah. Including the controversial attempt to impeach the CS for transport, Bona James Masharia. Now, Kenyan voters have always complained and wondered what happens to good people when they finally make it to parliament. What are these guys given or injected with <laughs> when they enter the August house so that they become completely unrecognizable yeah, from what people knew about them before they entered parliament. And in Ali's case, it was a very huge disappointment. Because this a man who had risked his life yeah, to expose evil in Kenya during his illustrious career as a journalist yeah, for the KTN. Indeed, at one point, he had to flee the country yeah, for his own safety. Yeah, because he did a sensitive story and people were after him. And so with this kind of background, Kenyans expected an exception in Honorable Ali. But let me solve the mystery for you today. The issue here is always about money. You see, to be able to win an election in Kenya today, yeah, as a member of parliament for instance, you need huge sums of money. And if you're an ordinary journalist, yeah, even a top-notch journalist like Ali was, and you saved even for 20 years, <laughs> you would still not be able to cut it. Yeah, that would still not be enough money to win a parliamentary seat, or rather most parliamentary seats in Kenya. Especially in a constituency like Nyali, Mombasa, yeah, an urban constituency. So the only way you can do it is by sourcing finances somewhere. And usually in politics, when somebody finances you to win a seat, they expect you to return the favor yeah, when you get elected, which means 
you become remote controlled by the people who financed you. So even if you're a good person, and even if you have the illusion that you'll be able to make a difference, as long as somebody financed you to enter parliament, you will have to sing according to their tune. And I have to confess, yeah, this is something I missed in the case of Muhammad Ali. Because when he failed to get the ODM nomination in 2017 and opted to be an independent candidate, I failed completely to see the fact, the reality, that to be an independent candidate, you need even more finances yeah, than if you were an ODM flag bearer. Well, we now know who financed him, Deputy President William Samoy Ruto. And I have a feeling that the initial plan was for Muhammad Ali yeah, not to be associated with the Deputy President, but to quietly do things in favor of the Deputy President behind the scenes and keep his image. But things got hot for the Deputy President. Yeah, and he had to bring out Muhammad Ali, <laughs> one of his troops, out into the open. I remember watching that video the first time Muhammad Ali appeared at a DP Ruto rally. Horrified, perplexed, crestfallen, as my hero, Muhammad Ali, took to the podium and sang the praises of the Deputy President. I just couldn't believe my eyes. And I'm sure the same goes to very many Kenyans. Now, this background is critical in order to understand Muhammad Ali's latest <laughs> drama. Because, first question, who is he exposing? He's exposing the political opponents of the deputy president. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not defending anybody, yeah? but we need to understand the motives of any politician in order to do an accurate analysis that will stand the test of time. Because I know one of the reasons why many of you never miss any video on this channel is that you've tested me yeah, and you've noticed that a lot of the analysis I do not all of it, because I'm human. A lot of the analysis I do tends to stand the test of time. Even, sometimes, even when I'm wrong about a particular detail in my analysis. Even more interesting was the person who sat right next to Jichopevo during his latest explosive presser. Yeah. It was former Machakos Senator Johnson Mudama. It is now becoming crystal clear that Bwana Mudama is firmly in the deputy president's camp. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's his democratic right, yeah, whom he chooses to support politically. But maybe I need to give you a quick aside. Yeah, this is not good news for one Kalonzo Msiuka. Because Bwana is very influential in Ukambani politics. Yeah. And now that Kalonzo Msioka's wiper party yeah, is preparing to go into serious marriage with the Jubilee, <laughs> that can only mean we should expect fireworks in Ukambani politics in the weeks and months to come. Anyway, back to Ali. The latest strategic approach of the Nyali legislator is consistent yeah, with the DP Ruto strategy, which I mentioned earlier in a video some weeks back, of fighting back against his political opponents by exposing members of the first family. And in this latest presser, he went a step further and went very close to the center of power the President of the Republic of Kenya. But I have something to say that might shock you. Yeah, we know all that. However, in this particular case, the political repercussions and consequences 
may just go in favor of Muhammad Ali. Already, the signs on the ground are that people don't want to know <laughs> who sent Muhammad Ali. What they are very interested in and want to support fully is what he's saying. You know, there was a very good initiative that came out of the deputy president's camp called the Punguza Mizigo Initiative, yeah, fully financed by the deputy president, that many Kenyans, including myself, fully supported. Because had it gone through, it was the best thing yeah, that could ever happen to Kenya. And many people saw its huge advantages. However, Raila Odinga's camp were able to convince everybody yeah, that the source of the financing of that initiative was actually William Samuel Ruto. And that was the end of that initiative. It didn't fly. It was dead on arrival, as good as it was. However, in this particular case, things may pan out a little differently. And in my view, the main reason are the unprecedented economic hardships facing people in the coastal region of Kenya. Yeah. And most of these difficulties can easily be linked by recent government policy. And recent developments have just made matters worse. Or shall I say, have rubbed salt on open wounds. <laughs> you know what that means? Yeah, when somebody already has a wound and you put in salt and you rub it vigorously, there is pain, yeah, excessive pain. And that is precisely what is going down in Mombasa. Because the truth is, the port has always had its owners. Yeah. What Jichopevu told us, a lot of it is nothing new. Yeah. For instance, the fact that uh, particular baths in the port are owned yeah, by Ali Hassan Joho's older brother, that is very old news. The fact that the bigwigs in the country have always had control or controlling interests at the port, that is old news. But then there was a recent directive, yeah, which we were told came from the East African community heads of state, that directed that in an effort to control COVID-19, all cargo in Mombasa would go straight into the SGR, yeah, the train, to Naivasha. Yeah, and then from Naivasha, all the clearances and processing would be done. That means completely paralyzing the already ailing transport business, yeah, road transport of cargo from Mombasa to Nairobi. Literally taking away the little food <laughs> remaining from the mouths of truck drivers, turn boys, and many other related services that were bringing in income for Mombasa people. Now, very fascinatingly, yeah, recently, the country called Uganda <laughs> distanced itself from this alleged directive from East African community heads of state. Yeah, Uganda, of course, is a prominent member of the East African community. And the Ugandan government said that there should be no such directive. That instead, people should be given options of either the SGR or road transport. Now, now, now. That raises the question. <laughs> Where did this directive actually come from? Or maybe somebody doctored the initial directive, yeah, which may have said, allow still some road transport, yeah, depending on what the owner of the cargo yeah, believes is more advantageous to them. And if that is the case, it deepens the mystery further, yeah, because we have to ask ourselves, what was the motive of doing this? Bottom line, it may not be very easy to simply write off 
Deputy Chopevo, yeah, and say is a support of the Deputy President. Because the issues he's raising are pressing, yeah, and are of great concern, yeah, to Mombasa people. You know what will most likely happen, yeah, from all this drama, is that Muhammad Ali will not get his way. However, it is very possible that he could quickly emerge overnight as the Mombasa kingpin. This could be a very smart strategy to position Jichopevo to be the next governor of Mombasa because Ali Hassan Jo is serving his second and last term as governor. And all the other prospective successors yeah, are quiet. Yeah, and some of them are direct beneficiaries yeah, of what's going on at the port. And so, this should be super fascinating to observe and watch going forward. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.